YouTube, it's Faye, and for today's video, I'm gonna talk about a part that is often overlooked and uh, so commonly overlooked that I actually overlooked it in one of my previous videos. So consider this an addendum to one of my previous videos, and that is the one on the differential service, and the part I'm referring to is this guy. Diff vent and like this is something like I've been seeing this TSB roll around since like 2016 or so that you know it's it's recommended Toyota highly highly recommends quiet leaves Toyota highly highly recommends that you replace this little vent after any major transfer case or differential overhaul uh, to prevent like possible repeat failure and I'm like kind of sounds a little bit suspicious like you think that maybe that clogged vent may have like something to do with it or like reusing that vent is a bad thing therefore like maybe that was a contributing factor so then at that point it's like why is not there a service interval for this uh, so in the case of this truck it has 175,000 miles on it and this is the original as far as I know diff vent so I'm gonna go ahead and replace it today quite often I forget to um, <laughs> I'm guilty of this, but I've been getting better and better and better about it because now it's like starting to actually become an issue and we're actually saying, quietly. And we're actually like starting to see some seal failure, like repeated seal failure due to pressure buildup in like your differentials and your transfer cases. So this is, this is the vent. This is the old. I'm about to replace it. And this is the new. Let me quickly show you how to replace it. It's like super easy. And like, let's talk about the signs that it's bad. Here goes. To perform this job, literally all I use is a 14 millimeter socket on a ratchet and a flashlight. <laughs> As you saw, it took like five seconds. All right, and the torque spec for this is like eight foot pounds. I'm not gonna use a torque wrench, but just like use common sense people, please. It's pipe threads, you can kind of feel when it's starting to get tight. That's fine. And this part was like super cheap. There's really no reason not to perform this job. Um, this is a really critical maintenance item. I think the list price from the dealer on this is like $10. Um, so super cheap considering like what could happen if you don't replace it. All right. So what happens if one of these goes bad? Uh, typically they're going to go bad by like clogging. Uh, and if they clog, then you're going to get excess pressure building up in the differential. And that can be bad for like whole bunch of reasons. First of all, pressure is going to build up anyway, because you're driving and it's going to get hot in there. And like with heat, things expand. So you're going to have like pressure build up inside of the differential. And when that happens, the pressure's got to escape somewhere. And usually that escapes through the pinion seal and then your differential's going to leak. Um, or it'll escape through the axle seals. And neither of those are fun. And all of those cost more than this $10 piece. So uh, I'll show you what that looks like on the truck. Okay, so here's the pinion seal. You would see an oil leak happening right here if your pinion seal was leaking. Dee -dee -dee. And then here, where the axle comes together with the backing plate for the brake drum, like right in here, we would start to see the axle fluid, the differential fluid, like leaking out from here. And you can see this one is perfectly dry. And this one is perfectly dry. And we want them to stay that way. All right, and this should probably go without saying, but in order to like test these with the mouth method, I'm uh, going to attach this little hose. I don't want to put my mouth directly in anything that is touch petroleum products. And like, why would you want to put this near your mouth anyway? It's like differential fluid smells freaking disgusting. But uh, you know, some people need to be told. All right, so I've got the old and the new, and um, I've got like a little vacuum pump too, but these don't hold like a ton of pressure even when they are, I mean, it would just be probably like a couple PSI anyway. Even just like testing both of these with a vacuum gauge real quick. Ah, actually, that's not what I was expecting. There's a pretty big difference in speed. Wow, okay, all right. So this one actually is starting to get a little bit clogged. It is. Um, holding vacuum a little bit more readily than the new one is. Let me show you that actually. All right, so here's the old one on the vacuum gauge and just like watch how fast the needle goes down. Okay, old one versus the new one on the vacuum gauge. New one, vacuum gauge, focus on vacuum gauge and it's like going down right away. You know, that's interesting. And then with like a process of, there's a, we have a vacuum test and this is just a, this is a Harbor Freight like brake bleeder kit thing that I only use as a vacuum pump. I don't actually use it for any brake bleeding. And then comparing these side by side with a pressure test, I'm just gonna like, you know, use my mouth. And blow on this one. And what's interesting is what I notice is that like, it's not an instant release of pressure. There's like a little bit of pressure I've got to overcome when I'm blowing on it. Whereas this one, 
it releases pressure right away. This one definitely holds more pressure. I don't know how to explain this to you, but like, it's a feeling. Like if you were to if you were to blow on these side by side, you'd realize that this one allows air to escape easier than this one does. Okay. So anyway, all right. So there's a, there's our quick pressure and vacuum test. And while this is not entirely bad, I can tell right off the bat this is starting to go bad at this very moment. So it's a good thing that uh, I'm replacing this today. All right, and just because I'm curious, and like maybe y'all are too, I'm just gonna open up this little diff vent and see what magic is inside of it. It's really interesting as you can actually see the moisture built up on this little seal here. It's, oop, <laughs> it's a little spring inside. Look at all those little moisture droplets that are built up on the inside of the diff vent. Isn't that interesting? And you can see the moisture built up inside here as well. Oh! <laughs> and as you can probably imagine, like, I mean, I'm sure many of you have seen like blown head gasket fluid when coolant and oil mix, uh, that's not good. When water and diff fluid mix, that is also not good. That could damage the bearings inside of your differential, your transfer case. Look at that, look at that moisture. And also like, <sighs> look at this little spring. Look at that. Look at this pathetic, wimpy little spring. Well, that was cool. I've never really taken one of those apart before. That solves the mystery. This technical service bulletin applies to model years 2009-2015, um, Tacoma, Sequoia, RAV4, Tundra, uh, Forerunner. So if you have a vehicle in that year range and uh, you have not replaced these, it's 10 bucks, go ahead and do it, highly recommend it. And uh, I decided to make this video today because this is something that like we often see on the technician side, but like, for the regular consumer side, we don't get the benefit of necessarily like seeing all these TSBs unless someone's kind enough to post it in a forum or your technician tells you. So I hope that some of y'all found this hopeful today. I hope that I saved some of you from premature seal failure. I know I saved this Tacoma today because this one was definitely starting to go bad. So that's, that's awesome. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, cool. I'll try to make another one sometime soon. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.